Brett Sands. Good evening, everyone. My name is Emily Hicks, and I'm here to talk to you about our startup, BreadSense. Now, I want to start with a question. Do you really know what's in your water or in the water around you? Now, chances are you have no idea. And that's because even though water is so vital to our lives and to virtually every single industry on Earth, we really don't have a lot of good ways to know what's in our water. The majority of our techniques sit in off-site labs, which means that if you wanted to go out and monitor some water and see what's in it, you would have to send someone to a site where they'd take a sample, package it up, ship it off to a testing lab, and then this would happen, a complex queue of waiting and processing. And what this really is, is it's tedious, it's expensive, it can cost several hundred dollars per sample, and it's slow. It can take five business days to get your results, during which time you have no idea what's going on in your water. And that can be a really big problem. If we look at the Gold King Mine in Colorado, last summer their wastewater dam broke and released three million gallons of contaminated water into the Animas River. Now, if you were in one of those communities downstream of that, would you want to wait five business days to know if your water is safe to drink? That doesn't really seem like a great solution. And in today's world of an internet of things, where we have sensors on our smartphones, our refrigerators, our coffee makers, it seems just a little bit backwards that this is how we monitor water. Now, we started thinking about this back in 2012. And at the time, we were a group of students competing in a genetic engineering competition at MIT. And we were trying to use bacteria to solve this problem. Now, we did really well at the competition that year. We won more awards than any team had since it started. And what we really built was this little guy called Fred, or our field-ready electrochemical detector. And Fred is a genetically engineered bacteria that can detect specific contaminants in water and then produce electrical signals to tell you how much is there. Now, when we finished the competition, we were pretty excited about getting this out into the world. But I tell you, when you're from Calgary, Canada, and you ask people for advice, and you tell them that you're a group of students, and you want to start a biotech company in the oil and gas capital of Canada, they kind of give you this look. And when we sat down and kind of crunched the numbers and realized that we were going to need half a million dollars to get our molecular biology lab set up to really build this out, we kind of had that look too. And that's when we realized that if we were going to do this, we'd need to be so much more innovative. And so we were. We went to every single cash and carry, government surplus, friend of friend of friend of friend that might know where there was a free centrifuge, and we cobbled together our own molecular biology lab for less than $2,000. And we didn't have a lab at the time, so that's what my mom's kitchen looked like one day <laughs> when the first of the eBay packages arrived. And we set up testing in her kitchen trying to figure out how to turn this into a product. And we came up with a pretty simple solution. If we take our bacteria and put it in a little cartridge, we would add in a water sample, shake it up, and plug it into a small detector we built out of basic electronics. You would then get your data on an app that we wrote in a matter of minutes. And what we saw was that we could miniaturize this and put it on microchips that could in a, sit in a box with some robotics and be an autonomous system that we could leave on site at a water monitoring location, and it would take in a sample once a week, once a month, and tell you what was in your water without needing to send someone there. But what we thought was really interesting is we realized that we could customize this. So by simply tweaking a bit in the genetic code of the bacteria, we could get it to detect something different. So while we started with arsenic, by tweaking it, we could get it to detect copper, or cadmium, or estrogen allowing us to move into a variety of different markets. But the big question is, who would really care about this? And we saw a huge number of industries where this would be important. We wanted our beachhead market to start with environmental consultants, because these are the people that are tasked by the mining companies, the agricultural companies, the oil and gas companies, to go out in the field and test water. And there's about 45,000 of them in the United States, making up a $20 billion market. 
And through some of our pilots with them, they've told us that they want faster, easier ways to do their job. But the clients that contract them, they want better data. They want to know today that they have a problem, not in a week from now when the results come back from the lab. And Fred can do this. And so based on some assumptions of selling to some of these groups that we're already partnering with, we could hit market in 2017, be profitable within a year, and be looking at 30 million by 2019 that would allow us to scale into some of these other market opportunities where we see so much potential. But the big question is, why do we think we can win? Well, you might have noticed we're pretty scrappy, but we think we can rapidly increase our sensors. So by tweaking those bacteria, we can, we can start with one sensor and allow us to expand to detect a variety of different things. So while we may start with arsenic, which is a big problem in groundwater across the US, with one little tweak, we could move into agriculture, looking at nitrates. Or what if we looked at mercury, which is a byproduct of the mining industry? By making these changes, we could capture even more of this $20 billion market, as well as look at other verticals we haven't even thought of yet. But the other big thing is that regulatory concerns are growing every day. People care more and more than they ever have before about what's in their water. So much so that we have groups contacting us to do paid pilots because they want to get this technology out in the field. Now, we think we have a great team behind this, myself, my co-founder David leading it, as well as some fantastic advisors helping us at every step of the way. We have a great technical team back home in Calgary, Canada, building out this technology. And they have the experience in the genetic engineering and the electrochemistry. Now, in our first year and a half, we've developed a patent-pending platform We've won about 100K in business plan competitions, and we've achieved a prototype that can detect one part per billion. That's on par with the machines that we're competing against in the analytical labs. We've been ranked by the, a prominent mining innovation council as the number one up and coming water monitoring technology, and we have paid pilots launching next year. We're now looking to raise $1.5 million to get us through these field trials and out to the market. Now, if I want you to take anything home tonight, it's that water monitoring is painful, and it's out of date. We think FRED is an easy alternative, and it's a scalable opportunity. And now we need your help, because we want a world where you're going to know exactly what's in your water. Thank you.